back to the Magpie Channel on TV. Happy Friday! And we can finally talk about a football match again. After a two-week break, we do actually have a game this weekend. So it's not just transfer news in this video, even though there's a lot of it, <laughs> because of what Eddie Howe has said in his press conference this morning. Loads to get through in this video. But can I just start the video off by saying Newcastle are going to win the league next year. Liverpool, Klopp's leaving. He's announced that he's leaving at the end of the season. Man City, going to get relegated with all these 115 pen and charges. Newcastle, title charges on, lads and lasses. Title charges on, can't wait for it. So it might all be a bit doom and gloom at the minute, not seeing anyone yet and knocked out of cups and everything. But I'll tell you what, next year is our year. Early shout. I haven't even had a drink yet, Friday afternoon. Now, nah, being serious, honestly, this is a really good thing for Newcastle changes things. Obviously, we don't know what's going to happen with Man City yet. Anyways, that's the whole thing for another video. I just thought I'd get that little joke in there and the little tweet in there. But anyhow, anyhow, let's talk about what he said in the press conference this morning. First thing we have to touch on, what he touched on, was Kieran Trippier's future. And he wanted to make it adamant that he wanted to stay in Newcastle. Ted wasn't turned, like the media was suggesting, by Bayern Munich. And he wanted to stay. He's committed to the club. And Newcastle did not see any value in selling him for £13 million because he's worth way more than that in terms of what he brings on and off the pitch. So he's saying there's no chance of Trippier leaving this window. On other players, however, Miggy Almiron, who's been pictured a day ago in the RVI with a member of staff from Newcastle United. Who knows what that could be? I'm not even going to try and draw. Everyone's saying it could be a medical to go away. Everyone's saying he could be in. I don't know. No idea. But that's what's happened. I'm not going to try and clutch on that one. And asked about Almiron... He has said that that news has come from somewhere. Eddie Howe said that, so that's kind of like there is something to it. It's, it's came from somewhere else. But he doesn't want to lose him, which he's obviously going to say. I'm telling you, he's obviously talked about his goals last season and his hard work this season and everything. He, Eddie Howe would sell Amron, I'm sure of it. The club would. It's just down to Miggy if he can agree terms with Al-Shabaab or the other Saudi teams that are linked with him. But he's never going to come out and go, oh, I, I bloody tell you what, Miggy needs to sort out, doesn't he? Eh? He needs to get accepting this offer so we can get him moved on, get someone else in. He's never going to say that. So he was back in his player, of course he would. But with Wilson was the most interesting one out of this, I thought, where he kind of said, well, I don't want to lose the uh, striker. I've only got two strikers, and I don't want to lose this one, even though he's injured. And why would we be offering him to other clubs? Because that's what the media's been reporting all week. You know, oh, Wilson's been offered to Madrid. He's been offered to Man United. And uh, Eddie Howe's saying, we're not offering him to anyone. But things can change in football. And uh, who knows, he was asked about his cryptic messages that Wilson put on Instagram last night. Eddie Howe was saying, well, he's went deep there, hasn't got a clue what that means. Neither does anyone, really. But with Wilson, there was a bit less of the, oh, yeah, he's definitely going to stay, oh, he's commit. He did say he was, you know, focused on Newcastle United and wants to do well here. But I'm, I, I could see that one as well. I just think if someone did come in with a good offer, we could see Wilson leave. But again, it depends on with the chance window now that there's less than a week to go. But he was basically saying, obviously, he doesn't feel like he can afford to lose one of his strikers since he's only got two and he'd be left with one if Wilson left with only Isaac up top. On Jamal Lascelles, where Turkish media have been reporting non-stop, he is coming, he's close, he's very close to joining Besiktas. Eddie Howe is saying he hasn't got a clue about that one. He, <laughs> he's saying he expects Lascelles to be here, but he, he doesn't know if he's going to be here next summer, though. He was asked, you know, about his contract situation, what's going on there, because you can leave for free in the summer. And Eddie wasn't giving anything away. He was saying, oh, I don't know about his contract. I don't know how, if he's going to be here or whatnot. But right now, he's part of uh, he's, he's part of our plans. He's important to us. So with that one, how tricky. And again, it, you can't really take much from this because it's not like Eddie Howe's going to sit down in front of the media and be like, I trip you, I want to leave, but we didn't get offered enough. Uh, Almiron Al wants to stay. He's hanging on the training ground. You know, he's clinging on to the treadmill and we're trying to pick him up and ship him out. But uh, he doesn't want to go to Saudi, but we're desperate for him to leave. Lascelles, yeah, he's in Turkey now, getting his teeth done. And Wilson, we're just waiting for Chelsea to pay a bit more money. Jay, he's not going to come out and say that. So, as you'd expect there, really. But anyhow, given the transfer update, and obviously he was pushed on, will we be signing someone before the window closes? And he says they are working behind the scenes to try and be creative, using that word again, like he did last year, to try and sign someone. Obviously, that would imply it would be like a Lewis Hall deal, where you get someone on loan with an obligation to buy next summer. There's rumours that that's been the case with Atalanta's midfielder Edison, the Brazilian over there in Serie A, that we could be trying to work something like that out. Same kind of applies to Onana at Everton. And then you're looking at, obviously, loan deals that we've tried for other players. So he says they are trying. They are working hard. He does ideally want to sign someone, uh, especially a midfielder, with the remaining of this window to go. But he said he was questioned, you know, should Newcastle fans be prepared 
to not sign anyone this window and he said well that is a big possibility because there's lots and twists and turns to go I'd be gutted if we didn't sign anyone but we still potentially could I, I still think we'll get the one in that I said would it's not going to be Phillips he's joined West Ham on loan how we said that that one was financially unable to be done by the club the tune pulled out of that one because they didn't want to pay that loan fee that uh, West Ham have paid even though there isn't an obligation to buy in the summer either he would probably return to City and then maybe somewhere else, Calvin Phillips. But the most important thing is that the club are trying and they are, they're not just saying, ah, nah, nah, we're not going to say anyone, you know, Ashley times. Because everyone was getting hyped up last night on Twitter and stuff because uh, Steve Lee, Gadusi, Yassiat El Ramian, the chairman, flew into London and they've all been at Anna Castle, the famous meeting room there in Anna Castle that featured on the Amazon Prime documentary where we obviously had the big discussions and where we decided to say Anthony Gordon. So they're there, transfer summits. Are taking place so they're trying to figure something out they're trying to get a signing in and obviously they're trying to work out who they can get rid of so we'll wait and see there was loads to talk about from Eddie Howe's press conference but we'll be here all day and I know it's a Friday so no one is going to be watching for too long so let's jump on to team news now then ahead of tomorrow's FA Cup trip to Craven Cottage Jacob Murphy is the positive news to come out today that he is back training and could feature at Fulham so that's fantastic news We've really missed Jacob. That option down the right-hand side. Again, I think that's why Miggy's been poor. He's a guaranteed starter. He knows he's going to play no matter what happens, no matter how crap he is, no matter how many chances he misses, he knows his first name on the team sheet because there's no one else that can play there, apart from Matt Ritchie, who's you know 50 next week. So I tell you what, Murphy's back. That's very good news for us. We could do with that. The likes of Barnes and Willock in that are close, Eddie Howe said, might feature next week against Villa on Tuesday night, but they won't be making the trip to Fulham. So let's talk about that big FA Cup clash tomorrow night then, which some people are saying hinges on our season. How was asked about this, you know, the importance of the Cup. It doesn't mean that our season would be over. We got knocked out of the Cup. He was kind of reluctant to say that, obviously, because he said we're 10th at the minute, but there isn't much difference in the teams above us, points-wise, so we can make up ground. But obviously, he wants to go far in the FA Cup. He said as soon as they got knocked out of the Champions League and the Carabao Cup, attention turned to this as the real focus point to try and improve our season and get back to Wembley so we are taking it seriously obviously we smashed the Mackens in the last round and how said everyone's now ready to go again he said as well that the team should be looking very good tomorrow night he's confident of getting back at our best before all these games and injuries stockpiled up he wants us to be back to what we've seen last season energetic high press in your face scoring goals so it all sounds great so let's hope we see that at Craven Cottage tomorrow night, 7pm kickoff on ITV4, I think it is. And it's not going to be an easy game, this one. Although you may think differently when I see my score prediction at the end, as always. But with Fulham, they're actually a really good side. They're kind of good, Fulham like. I mean, we beat them 3-0 at St. James Park not long ago, but Jimenez got sent off, so that helped. And obviously, they played midweek, so that should help us. With that break that we've had, with the extra minutes on the on the training pitch, like how said, we should be fresh, sharp, ready to go. Whereas Fulham might have been knackered. They look like they gave it their all on Wednesday night to try and get through to their first final in, in a long time. And they were close. Drew with Liverpool on the night. Only got beat by the goals in the, in the first leg there. 3-2 on aggregate. So it was a close game. And they were unlucky. I thought Fulham were very good in that game. They miss chances though. They do miss a lot of chances. But they, they do look dangerous as well. The wingers and, and Jimenez up top. And they're just a solid outfit. I think Silva's done a very good job there. So it's not going to be a pushover. It's not. It's by far not the easiest you know, cup draw we could have got. But I think if you want to get far in the FA Cup and if you can't beat Fulham, you don't deserve to get far, in my opinion. So we have to go out there tomorrow night and do the business. However, our recent record in the FA Cup is on your screen now. This is how we have fared in the FA Cup in recent times. In the fourth round in particular, if we made it there, as you can see last year, beaten in the third round by Sheffield Wednesday and then Cambridge United the year before that. These are provided by SofaScore, by the way, people who are sponsoring this video, so shout out SofaScore. You can download the app with the QR code on your screen now. The link is also in the description to get the app for free. You can get brilliant stats like this on the games and you can also get live scores when the match is being played. You're out and about, little notification on your phone, bang, let you know what the score is, who scored is the record. You can check all the stats, possession, everything on SofaScore, fantastic app, free to download, so click the link in the description for that, and they provided me the graphic for that one there, our recent FA Cup record. So it's not very good, that record, is it? We could definitely do with improving on it, so I wouldn't mind that happening tomorrow. I can't remember the last time we had a good FA Cup run. You know what happened in the Carabao last year, but FA Cup-wise, it hasn't been great. This is a big chance 
to get through the fifth round and then the draws on Sunday, so we've got a home draw, which we know won't happen, we know that. But tonight, City play Spurs, yeah, Chelsea play Villa, some big teams are going to get knocked out, so it's, it's not looking bad, Arsenal are already been knocked out by Liverpool, so there is a chance there. Get a decent draw, hopefully at home, in the fifth round, not overlooking Fulham yet, by the way, obviously you get past them, as I've said, tricky game, but you're then one game away from quarter-final, and before you know it, semis at Wembley. So, it's a chance for Newcastle to really... I don't want to say save our season because I don't think it's over yet, although I could be having a rant on, on Saturday night saying that if we get beat, I could see it happening now. To be honest with you, having a meltdown, I'd be devastated. Absolutely good. There's no excuses yet. I've said Fulham are a good team, this, that and the other, but they've just played Carabao Cup. We are fresh. We have got to go there and get the win and I'm really hoping to have a good FA Cup run here. Not saying we're going to win it, not saying we should win it, but I, I think we've got to get past Fulham and then depending on the draw, you could be in the quarters if you get a good fifth round tie. So, there is a chance, there is a possibility, and then I'm hoping once we get our injured players back, our, our Premier League form kicks in, because the next two months we've got some really good, winnable games. That's for another video, though, looking at fixtures, or just as they come. But on my opinion, the Fulham game, I'm going to go, I know I've said it's going to be hard, I was going to say 2-1, I'm going to go for a 3-1 win. Up the mags, come on, FA Cup, baby, give me that historical cup run. That's what I'm here for, right? Just watching people, I'll be doing a match reaction after the pub tomorrow night, so it could be it could be saucy that one, but it won't be a live one because I'm uh, I'm out tomorrow night, going to enjoy myself. But I will be bringing you as a quick reaction to the game afterwards. Let me know how you think the game will go in the comments below. Let us know what you thought of Howe's press conference, the transfer news, and remember, download Sofa Score the app free to download is in the description. Quality little app there. Get all your score updates and news and all that sort of lovely stuff. So cheers for watching, everyone. See you again soon. And hopefully enjoy the rest of your weekend.